Are ghosts real? Several recent encounters suggest there might be more things in heaven and earth than we can dream of. So are werewolves just a Hollywood creation, or do half-man, half-wolf creatures really exist? Now, tonight, we kick off our Conspiracy Theory Month series, which was a... The legend of the vampire actually goes back for centuries, and it exists in some form or another in almost every culture. In fact, some people believe the first vampire story was in the Bible. Well, for decades, only crackpots and crazy people believed in UFOs. That's what I thought anyway. And then in recent years, it turns out that governments have been taking them seriously all along. Try and clear up an ancient mystery with the help of a prominent veterinarian who says she can prove that Bigfoot exists and that he's related to all of us. New reports by pilots coming forward over the weekend saying they've had multiple mid-air encounters with high-flying, fast-moving objects. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to Season 2, Episode 1 of Celestial Oddities' Pair of Normal Guys podcast. I am Garrett Jagaman. And I'm your co-host, Daniel James. And we want to thank you for tuning in tonight, whether listening live, you're streaming the episode, or you've downloaded it after the fact. We want to thank you, obviously, for your contributions towards the show. And you can, if you would for us, click the like, share, and follow buttons on any one of those platforms to help move us up the podcast community rankings, allow more people to discover the show, keep you in tune with new episodes as they air, and allow you to jump through our past archives of old episodes, which there's something for absolutely everyone in the paranormal and supernatural realm. So make sure you don't miss a thing. If you are new to our show, we bring you the best in supernatural and paranormal content, metaphysical, ceremonial, you name it. We talk about a lot of different strange topics here. We go into our own theories and ideas on it, um, and we bring you... Well, I actually should say we are going to be bringing you a new schedule, um, a little bit more fine-tuned every other Thursday night from here on out, so no more wondering which night of the week we're going to air, when we're going to air. I apologize for that before. Um, Our schedules are always a little hectic, but we've ironed out being able to do every other week for the most part, and that'll be from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on all platforms from iTunes to iHeartRadio, Spotify, Deezer, Spreaker, CastBox, Google Play, Amazon Podcast, you name it, we are on it, so make sure you listen where you feel most comfortable. If you have any ideas for the show, anything that you would like to see us do or do differently, drop us an email at celestialoddities at gmail.com, or you can message us on our Celestial Oddities Pair of Normal Guys podcast page on Facebook. So Daniel, how you been, brother? Oh, I've been good, man, staying busy. You know, the energy keeps moving, it keeps flowing, uh, the journey of the soul is ever-evolving and expanding. You know, we've been we've been gone for a little while here, as, you know, life would have it. Things sort of ebb and flow, they expand and contract, and now we are back here, ready to go, get it popping. Do you know what I'm saying? I hear you there, uh, man. Yeah, man, no, things are good. Uh, if, if you are a, a long-time listener of the show or you're brand new to it, uh, we are back. We have a lot of topics to get into. Uh, Garrett and I have both been pursuing, you know, our own respective sort of endeavors and projects. And uh, I myself am still, uh, I run a full-time video service, which I absolutely love doing. And my partner, Lauren, and I are always growing and expanding in our services. And so that's kept me pretty busy, uh, you know, for the past few months. It's a full-time job, which is great. And, uh, you know, we, we're we also, actually, one thing I'll touch on real quick is uh, if, you, if you'd listened to any of the previous episodes, Garrett and I have mentioned producing a documentary. And the documentary is nearing completion. It's just been held up in a little bit of a, what, one of the stages where we're having some animation, some sort of cartoons designed for the documentary. It's uh, something aesthetic that I, fe- I felt was really creative and fun to do, but it's actually been more challenging than you would imagine to hire a good, you know, cartoonist and an animator who can kind of bring your vision to life, something that's both affordable, but also, you know, effective. And so uh, we will be having, you know, a documentary that will love everybody to watch. It'll be free to watch online. And that's uh, an endeavor of Garrett and mine, my friend Caroline and and Lauren as well, that we produced together as a team, just as friends, where we were doing a little bit of, uh, you know, investigating what we call the Bermuda Triangle of Pennsylvania. 
pretty fun, pretty interesting. So that's coming as well. It was a great time. Now. It was a great time, and it and it was it was a, for it was longer ago than you would think. It really uh, has been, honestly. <laughs> It's been a minute, right? So it's going to hit you too, Garrett. You know, when you see it, the nostalgia is really going to slap because it's been longer than I wanted it to be to get the film produced and released. So since it's been so long, I think that you'll really enjoy it. You know, when it when it's done, uh, it, it's a really, you know, for being darker in content, it's actually a really feel good documentary. So uh, I, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense when we're out there looking for like cryptids and studying cryptozoology and we're out there in the woods and stuff, but it's actually a really feel good documentary. So I'm excited for people to see it. No, I'm excited for it as well to see, you know, and recap that night because you've got to see it from an editing standpoint. Um, you know, I haven't got to see it at all. So to see it now after this period of time is going to be really nice. And, and, you know, honestly, Time has just flown by, not only since we've done that, but since our last season finale, since um, COVID has started, since a lot of things have taken place. Time has flown by so quickly. I mean, we did a recap episode to finish out the season of season one of Celestial Oddities, and then we were to pick right back up with season two, and that was actually four months ago in five right. days. So, right. um, you know, it just time had not you know, interacted with us the way we wanted to. So folks out there listening, we do apologize for the delay. A lot of things were happening, I'm sure, not only in our lives, but in all of, all of our lives out there. Um, but like I said, I'm very happy to announce that we're back on track. We have a set night of the week, which is the same night as my other radio show. So every other week, me and Dan will be, um, you know, putting an episode out for you. And then in between there, every other week, my other show, Nights of the Nephilim, will be putting a show out as well. So constantly Thursday nights, Celestial Oddities Radio will be putting out some type of content on one of the two shows. So it'll be easy to track 8 to 9 for Daniel and I's show and 8 to 9.30 on Nights of the Nephilim. Right. And one thing I'll say also, and this is generally something that we would cover at the end of the episode, but I want to let you guys know that uh, we do have uh, a public Facebook group for Celestial Oddities for the podcast. And the more engagement that we have with you guys, the more questions you ask, the more topics that you want us to hear talk about, the more content you guys will get as well. So please feel free to reach out to both Garrett and myself on Facebook. Um, we're both very social and jump in the Facebook group and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have, but also uh, go ahead and submit any, you know, topics you'd like us to discuss or stories that you want to share. Because like one thing Garrett and I love doing is we love to sort of take your experiences and then share them on the show as well. So, uh, you know, engage with us, interact with us. We do have the Facebook group. We'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah, because I mean, one thing, if you are new to the show and you might not be aware of it, not only do Daniel and I talk about different topics, discussions, theories, and ideas of paranormal and supernatural realms, but we also do bring on listeners such as yourselves out there for your experiences, Dan said, and letting you kind of tell your experience, whether it's first person and you're telling it on the air whether it's you just sending it into us in, in text and we go ahead and read your story. You know, you can stay anonymous if you'd like. You can say your name. That's fine as well. And then the third part of the show is we do actually bring on guests and interview them from time to time as well, which we'll be doing more of this season. So it's a little bit of a mixture of everything. Listeners, experiences, interviews with great personalities and topics and discussions of the supernatural. So this, you know, season is geared up to be a hell of a season. I was just telling Dan, you know, it's hard to believe last season we aired and produced 24 episodes of Celestial Oddities and, you know, it covered a wide array of topics and discussions and we plan to do every bit of that this season, if not more. In fact, we hope to obviously blow away last season. Absolutely. And uh, we love engagement. We love talking to you guys like this is a very collaborative podcast. So, you know, get a hold of us and, and interact with us. We'd love to hear from you guys. And, uh, you know, we'll also be putting out more specific topics because I'm somebody who gets big into the philosophy or excuse me, the philosophy and the theory behind things. And I always look at stuff from a metaphysical perspective. That's why Garrett and I are a good team because he's got that paranormal background and I have a metaphysical background. And so we pair those together to get a lot of different angles on topics, but we want to get down to more specific things, you know, and let me give you guys an example, Gary. I'll just throw this out there both real, real quick. Cause I thought it was fun. I had run across just this morning. Um, on my on my phone, a pretty convincing, fairly convincing video of what somebody captured on, you know, on like a potato phone or something, uh, a werewolf, right? And what we want to do is we want to talk about 
accounts and encounters and experiences like that. So Garrett, I mean, while we're on the topic, let's let's chat about the werewolf video real quick. So as I mentioned to you in the text message, I'm a filmmaker. I'm an actor. I've worked with practical effects, visual effects. Um, I am a camera operator and a video editor. So when looking at all kinds of like, you know, paranormal videos of the little creatures running around and all that stuff, I like to analyze them from from the, the perspective of a filmmaker and somebody who's used to working with visual effects. It helps me sort of discern what's fake and what might actually be real. And when analyzing the video, just like so many of us have seen like Bigfoot and Sasquatch videos, there's a lot you can do to disqualify it and, and call it a hoax. And there's a lot of things that, you know, scientifically speaking, look very convincing in terms of the physics and the way the camera works. So I was analyzing this werewolf video this morning, and uh, it, the, the creature itself, it's very, it's very visible. You can see it pretty clearly. Uh, so it's not like, like a shadow play. Um, the, the quality of the camera could have been a little bit better, but it was, it was honestly better than what you generally see. This, these shots, you know, these clips you see on like YouTube look like they're filmed on like a, a, a 2002 Nokia, you know, that <laughs> can barely send a text message. So you can't make anything out on those types of cameras, but it looked relatively clear. And one thing I liked about this wearable video is, uh, the, the creature's movements, and its design, it did look a little commercial in terms of what, you know, mainstream media is like television and film, what their depiction of a werewolf looks like. Because uh, a lot of people don't, you know, haven't really seen them in real life. So when we do these movies, we, we make our best interpretation of what a human canine hybrid would look like. And then you make it scary. This creature looked like that. OK, it looked like what you would see in the movies, like the design was like, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Bad Moon. Maybe the Van Helsing film, maybe Cursed with Christina Ricci, like those designs of the werewolf looked like what this creature looked like. It was huge. It had fangs. It, it's, it had pointy ears. But what I was interested in was was if it was uh, a creature design, like a suit, it would have been like extremely high production value in terms of uh, what a practical effects artist could do for a horror film. It was very convincing in terms of the way that the creature design looked. Um, I'm looking at its eyes, you know, I'm looking at its mouth, the thing's mouth moved, uh, which we're talking animatronics, you know, uh, we're talking puppeteering. The thing was probably like seven feet tall. Um, one of the other things I look for when, when trying to debunk these, cell phone videos of creatures and monsters that people capture all over the world is what are the circumstances in which case the creature appears you know are people at a park are they hiking are they at a picnic you know is it in someone's backyard are they riding a bike down a dirt trail and they just pull their phone out real quick like what are the circumstances that this creature shows up and that this person's able to capture it and that oftentimes can sort of help, you know, steer you in a certain direction on whether or not this particular thing is real or is it staged? Is it sort of set up to be captured because it's a, a person in a costume? Um, I couldn't really discern in this video what was happening in terms of like the circumstances and why this creature w showed up and, and this person has a camera on it. But it looked like it might have been in someone's backyard, um, kind of, you know, coming into someone's backyard in the dark. And, uh, well, the thing was just huge and then, and then it moves, it moves and then they can't, and then the shot cuts out. I wish it was a little bit longer cause I'd like to analyze the movements to see if, you know, we're, we're speaking in terms of physics, if this was a guy in a costume or if it was a big hulking, you know, canine hybrid that, you know, we would love to see more of. So I couldn't tell about the circumstance that it was in, if that was believable or not. But from my perspective as a filmmaker, the creature design itself and the physics of it looked really good. I was very convinced on its physical appearance. Um, I couldn't hear anything, so I don't think I don't remember there being any sound, which would have also really, really helped the realism here. But um, that being said, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that we want to talk about. So, you know, we did an episode a while back where, you know, Garrett and I, Garrett was telling us a story about there were real like dog people. Absolutely. Right? 
Yeah, the, the I don't know if we, I know I told you. I don't know if that was something we told on the air or not, but I can definitely recap on that. But I mean, to, to say about the video, as you mentioned, yes, it, it is not the greatest quality, but much better than most sightings of Bigfoot or Sasquatch that you right. see. A lot of the different paranormal videos that you always see to get the high, high grain where you can barely even make it out. This was in, in you know relation to those very very clear um i don't believe there was sound in the video as well when i watched it um it looks to me almost as if it's in someone's backyard right. where they do some type of gardening because you see a big white table that it's standing behind and then off yeah. to the right you see another type of table and that looks reminiscent to me almost of gardening tables where you grow pots within that table um now, it looks like that maybe they had a commotion out back or maybe this thing has visited several times and they've been waiting for it and then they caught it on. It doesn't look like it's a stationary um, right. CDC camera. It looks like it's a um, a handheld because it moves towards it the moves. end as the thing moves almost like they're like, oh, shit, it's coming. Um, you see it. It is very clear. If it is a costume, it's a damn good costume because it doesn't look animated. It does look like it would have to either be a true capturing of, of this creature or someone playing this creature, but it would be very high tech, very elaborate yeah. costuming. Um, There's no visual effects. It's all in camera. Yeah. It's, it's all, all in camera. Practical. Yeah. It's very and practical. I'm and too. I'm watching it and you can see his mouth move. Yeah. You see his mouth move. And then at, at 25 seconds, cause the, folks, the, the total video clip is 27 um, at 24 to 25 seconds it stands up to move and it stands up in a, in a way that you can see it clearly. It's huge. huge. And then it lurches back down on its front legs as the scene cuts. So almost like it moves very animalistically where it stands on hind legs. But when it goes to move quickly, it drops down to all fours, mm -hmm. uh, making it a human animal hybrid. And it, it, like I said, I've watched a lot of, um, suspected dog men videos. And this would be by far the best I've seen. Um, there's one other one that compares, but it was so blurry that you really can't tell. This one had that clarity, which makes it, you know, a little bit better in my book. Now, what Daniel was speaking of, folks, is there is a story that was told to me by my father who uh, was talking to a buddy of his that was asked to watch a ranch um, for friends of his. They were going on vacation. They had farm animals. They had a ranch in the mountains that they need someone to take care of when they go away for a little while. They said, hey, it'll be a vacation for us to get away. We won't have to worry about our ranch. You can take care of the place while we're gone. It won't be that much work for you. And you'll be in the mountains. You'll be away from home. It'll be a vacation for you, and it's free. We have food here for you. Everything's taken care of. All expense paid You know, vacation. So he absolutely jumped on that. When he was there, he took several walks through the woods, and on one of the walks he took on one of the days being there, he heard a commotion coming from the ranch down the mountain from him. Um, he was a little bit higher up in elevation. When he, well, first I should say, let me take a back step. He kept hearing something shadowing him in the woods when he was walking, which is reminiscent of, of a lot of different sightings of things, whether it be Sasquatch dog, man, where there's something almost trailing your footsteps as you stop and it stops as you walk it, it walks. And he kept hearing that on a couple of the walks. Well, the one day he had heard a commotion from the animals down below and he had stopped and in the tree line, looked down at the ranch and outside of the wooden fences where the horses were kept, there was a creature standing as if it were a man on two legs but covered in hair, not a man at all. Very clearly you could see that this was something, you know, inhuman almost. And he had spotted and stood there and watched it for a minute or two. And then it noticed him and looked up at him in the woods and then dropped down and took off. Now that had him rattled. Obviously he, he went back to the, um, to the ranch and pretty much stayed there the rest of the vacation you know, scared shitless because there's no phone service out there. There's no way of reaching anybody. Wouldn't matter if he did. He's by himself in the mountains. What's he going to do? Um, but he still took care of the animals during the day and everything really didn't take his walks any longer. But on several occasions throughout the remainder of that week, he's seen more than one of these things in the trees up on top of the mountains where he was walking, where they would come to the tree line and almost be watching him from above. Now, to cap the story off, which is pretty cool, whenever the original ranch owners got back at the end of the week from their vacation, 
he was spooked and right away they're like what's wrong and he he says i don't know how to tell you this i had some wild stuff happen while you were gone and you know they said you seen them didn't you and he says what, what do you mean he says you seen them and they were already aware of that and he says you knew about these things and didn't tell me he says well we don't see them all the time they come around from time to time they're more curious than anything they've never caused us any problems um they've always kept to their own they've never actually attacked the animals which i thought was kind of interesting um and they just kind of keep to themselves but yes we've seen them on several occasions well needless to say he he kind of got the hell out of there after that and i don't think probably would ever be going back but this was something that was common to these this couple um and this is something that this other individual had seen himself firsthand and it was sharing with my father um so very interesting um and uh, there's been other people i've met along the way that have had sightings of lots of things but specifically dog man so it's very interesting to see this clip because it, it fits a lot of ways what other people who have had encounters have described yeah yeah i watched the video again multiple times and you know analyzing it from a filmmaking filmmaker's perspective and there's some things that are really convincing and believable about it there are some things that uh concern me uh that it might might be a hoax but um i won't go too far down this rabbit hole but if anybody knows me they know daniel james they know that i'm big into the concept of extraterrestrials and life on other planets and uh other forms of you know intelligent life and one thing that I know is there for every – okay, for every animal species that we have on the planet, on Earth, there is a hybridized version of those animal species that exists in other physical forms, oftentimes humanoid. So we're talking the insect kingdom, the, the avian kingdom, the canine kingdom, um, cetacean and aquatic, uh, feline. You know, the list goes on. So everything we have in terms of animals on Earth, there are there are hybridized humanoid versions of those beings that exist on other planets and, uh, you know, other versions of reality. So werewolves, uh, specifically uh, vampires, things like that, that's not lore in a sense that it's like some creative people dream these concepts up and, and then it becomes graphic novels and books and comic books and cartoons and movies and TV series, everything that you see comes from the collective consciousness of it existing somewhere in some time in some version of reality. It is real. And now it might not be relevant for a human for the earth, you know, for the earth realm, for the third dimension here, but it doesn't mean these things don't exist somewhere. And, you know, we can get into the debate of, you know, are we talking about aliens here? Are we talking about maybe dimensions that sort of phase in and out of each other where worlds cross and sometimes these creatures become, you know, they're, they exist in our realm for a brief period of time? Or uh, Garrett and I have actually spoken about this countless times on the show of how a lot of these creatures do exist but they live in the shadows they stay in hiding they live in tunnel systems and caves and they're oftentimes their existence is suppressed by our leadership and our government for you know all kinds of agendas and reasons that they don't want humans and civilians knowing that these things exist so i think it's a little bit of everything and that being said do you, do you believe that these creatures are out there lurking around or was that particular monster in that video real? It's very subje subjective in the sense that you can choose the answer for yourself instead of trying to look for the facts and say, well, what's the science behind this or how many people believe in that? You could really just choose for yourself and the power of your belief will find a way to affirm that for you, whether whether anything is real or not, you can find reasons to 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 believe it or to affirm that for yourself. So. I think that these beings exist. I think that we have human canine hybrids, uh, dog people or werewolves or shapeshifters. Uh, we have, you know, stories that go back hundreds of years specifically about, you know, canine and, uh, you know, shapeshifting beings and things of that nature from Aborigines and Native Americans. Uh, these stories are out there, whether you choose to believe it is up to you. Um, I personally do. I don't know if this creature in this particular video is real or if it was a hoax but you guys can be the, be the judge for yourself go to our celestial oddities facebook group uh it's it's a public group and i posted the video clip that we've been talking about in that group and it's right there on the timeline you can watch it for yourself and then uh you let us know what you think
Yeah, absolutely. We would love to know what you think. Invite people to the group if you'd like. We want to grow that this season and put more of an emphasis on growing this group, having people share their ideas, their experiences, make it a little bit more interactive amongst one another to be able to talk about the paranormal and supernatural. But certainly go on there and check the video out. These are the type of things that we want to be bringing you. Um, And I certainly am with you, Dan. I believe that these things do exist, Um, especially when you start getting into skinwalkers and and you get into Mm -hmm. um, shamanic Indian medicine men who have maybe turned to using black magic or dark forms of magic. Um, You know, and that's what a skinwalker is. It was the... It was the shamans who used it for, you know, magic for darker purposes turned into skin-walking, wolf-like beings. Um, and it is not something that they think is our urban legend and talk about. When you go to places, um, you know, in Utah and Nevada and Arizona and you talk to some of, of these cultures, they will tell you 100% that this isn't a hunch that they have or stories. These are real. I mean, they've encountered them. They've seen them. They know they're there. I mean, one of the most famous places in the world is Skinwalker Ranch. And if you haven't seen the documentaries released on Skinwalker Ranch, you really should watch it. It is mind-blowing and mind-boggling. We're not talking one or two incidences. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of incidences of strange, unexplained paranormal activity from ghosts to alien vessel sightings to... Um, you know, mutilated animals where they you find them the next day and they are picked clean. There's not an ounce of blood anywhere, no meat, no skin, just skinned bones sitting on the ground that so clean that they look like they were surgically removed. Um, it's wild when you start to dig into it. There's some wild shit going on out there. So these are the things we want to talk about. But before we get too sidetracked on that, that is just One of the topics and one of the ideas of some of the things that we talked about last season, we also touched on basis of things like inner earth civilizations and hollow earth theory, mermen and mermaids out there and Aquarian type unknown entities or beings that live out there. Um, You know, we had an episode where we recapped on local urban legends of different areas throughout the country and world where we talked about, um, you know, you know, urban legends from all over the place, including here in Pittsburgh. Um, so it was it was a pretty fun season. We hit a lot of things, Secret Space Program, um, Bigfoot, several call-in episodes where we had people come on and tell us about their experiences. We even had guests as far as um, Zimbabwe calling in, talking about black medicine men, witch doctors, and voodoo, um, to many, you know, spacecraft sightings, um, interviews, with some really great influential guests, some per- TV personalities. Um, so, you know, one hell of a season, and I'm very proud of Daniel and myself for being able to put out such a great season. And like I said, we plan on pummeling that season this year. So, um, you know, hang tight, buckle in every other Thursday night. Um, you're going to get some paranormal and supernatural content. And we love doing it, and we love interacting with you guys. And, um, you know, Garrett and and I are both really creative, artistic people. I think that uh, we've always had projects going on that serves as a platform for ourselves to help sort of explore our own interests and our own creativity and expand our consciousness as well. And uh, these shows are very important to us, and we love doing them. And uh, I'm going to use this as a little bit of a segue to just touch on the other two podcasts that we both have as well. Um, I myself run uh, another podcast. It's uh, mostly metaphysics only, Uh, spiritual stuff, uh, reality mechanics, what I call reality mechanics. That's project is That's So Meta. And it's funny because That's So Meta went on a sort of – break or a hiatus at the same time as celestial oddities did and it's also coming back at the same time as well and that sort of you know tends to happen for people very similarly in the sense where it's like uh you sort of phase in and out of ebb and flow in and out of things as they are relevant for you to explore and now you know i feel like celestial oddities and my other podcast that's so meta the energy is really good for those to be platforms for us you know places to explore ourselves and and to interact with people and to you know play and be creative so that's my other project and uh garrett i'll tell you also i did finally just 
get a new intro made for for that's so meta it's a little cartoon <laughs> of lauren and i that sort of depicts you know whatever we're talking about at the intro we have a little story there we hired a cartoonist um online and we finally are finishing up now just this week a little custom made it's it's kind of sweet you know lar- light-hearted little cartoon you know which is really fun uh intro for the for the podcast as well because that particular one we do on video and those are pre-recorded and Lauren and I edit those as a team, so we wanted to have like a fun little cartoon intro for the show, and uh, that is coming back. Uh, we'll probably here by the by the end of April. I'll, I'm going to be putting out more shows on that so meta as well, and uh, we'll be doing some interviews. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's just something that I'm working on, you know, in alignment to Celestial Oddities. Uh, I like having both of the podcasts myself because we do tend to explore different content, and. Uh, you and I, I think, are a good team, and we, we bring different things to the table. Uh, and then I've got, you know, that's so meta on the side, which is just a little bit more niche and specific on metaphysics. So it's a lot of fun to be able to do both, and they're both coming back at the same time, so it feels good. And uh, what I want to do real quick is also ask you, tell us a little bit about your second podcast, okay? Because I have that so meta on the side, but you have one as well. And if you follow Garrett and his work, then you're probably familiar with it, but on Celestial Oddities, we have a lot of my audi- audience as well that might be unfamiliar with with this other project of yours, what you're doing, what the mission is, and what it's about. So why don't you just touch on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first and foremost, folks, if you are listening out there and you haven't checked out Dan's other podcast, That's So Meta, you definitely should. Great content. I was a guest on the show at one point in time. You can catch that episode on YouTube. Awesome episode. All of his episodes with uh, Lauren and himself are great. Um, so make sure you give them a like, a follow, um, you know, and a subscription on YouTube. Um, as far as myself, I have run a few different shows over time and have retired some of those shows but i had started last year a new show called knights of the nephilim or the proper term would be the nephilim um but uh for ease of use i say nephilim because it can go either way tomato tomato um but knights of the nephilim is a podcast that i was bringing three times a month but as you heard me say earlier it'll now be every other week staggered with this show um what that is going to be is 8 to 9 30 p.m we bring on Famous occult authors, practitioners, ritual tool makers, theologians, historians, all in the realm of the occult. Everything from Hinduism to Buddhism, from Enochian to Satanic, from Santera um, to you know, Toltec. It doesn't matter what the background of theology of occultism is. We bring them on. We talk to them. We interview them. We pick their brain. We have a a talk show slash interview portion. Um, But these are some big names. I mean, as far as occultism go, I've already had I think 15 episodes at this point and have brought on huge um, authors and huge names in the call community. I am actually ending season one after the next three episodes. Um, I will be taking June off with the birth of my daughter coming and then picking back up in July um, as normal with season two. Now, season two, I can tell you I'm very excited for. Season one was amazing. Season two, some of the guests I have already locked in place are are insane. I mean, some of them are some of the biggest names in the planet as far as occultism goes. So I'm very excited about that. It has gained a lot of traction, gotten a lot of buzz. You know, have an open mind when listening to it. I don't expect you to believe all of the things that I believe. Um, same as this show. There is some heavy, heavy topics on there from black magic to Satanism, but there's also Hinduism, Buddhism, and everything in between, as we mentioned. And we never force it upon you. It's just our ideas, our experiences. I have been a longtime occultist uh, for over 17 years now, practicing, ritualizing, researching, and studying on a daily basis. It is a huge part of my life. Um, aside from my family and aside from this show it is all that I do so um, you know please check that out like I said every other Thursday night staggered with this one before we jump back into anything else I do have some comments here we have Logan said I heard of people witnessing other shapeshifters such as reptiles slash humans but I've never seen it firsthand but I do know that subtle changes can make a big impact to say the least such as the shamans that Freighter is talking about, which he's talking about myself. Um, 
holy hell. I wonder if you guys have heard of the shaved rhesus monkeys, which I have heard of them. I don't know a whole lot about them, but I've heard that. Um, and he says, my grandfather used to talk to the other members of the government and has had a, or has a few stories to himself. Ha ha. Um, and then we also have... Um, Chris tuned in here and he put, no, that's so meta or new. That's so meta. Fuck. Yeah. Talking about Dan's new season coming out. Can't wait for the new episodes of celestial oddities, nights of the Nephilim. And that's so meta. And we really appreciate it, Chris, for your support and love and for you, Logan as well. And to anybody else listening out there, make sure you click those share buttons. Um, but that's what we've been in, 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 you know, as far as our radio shows, our projects, we do have the documentary coming out, um, which we're really excited for. It was a fun night in the woods, a uh, fun night investigating, you know, areas that have had known UFO crash landings. Um, you know, there was a lot of energy in that documentary amongst friends out having a good time and exploring the unknown. Yeah, I'm really excited for it, man. Like I said, the the the, the documentary edit and the music and everything has all been done for several months. It's really just dialing in these animations to tie it all together and, together and give it that sort of special sort of aesthetic. So that's going to be coming real soon, guys, and it'll be free to watch. We'll share it all over our, our social media. We'll be getting a trailer out for it soon. And, um, yeah, Chris Nolan, man, thanks for chatting. Logan, we're really excited to chat with you guys. Thank you for listening. Um, you know, we love checking out the chat. Um, so yeah, guys, we're, we're back in it. You know, this is happening. We, we love having you listen. We love having you engage and interact with us, but Garrett and I are friends, you know, and we love just talking and in in a lot of ways, I, you know, we, in our day-to-day lives, we don't, we're not able to sort of get into all of this on a regular basis and express ourselves and explore consciousness and look into the shadows, you know, the, the way that we can on these platforms. And, and it feels really good having this space to talk and sort of, you know, theorize and get it all out, you know. And so we're, we're grateful to have you guys here with us. And Garrett, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to be back and doing this with you, bro. You as well, brother. I'm really excited to be back. I apologize to the fans. Like I said, that it's taken us a little while. It was a little rickety last year where we might air on a Tuesday one week, a Monday on a different week. I know that was confusing. It wasn't on purpose. It's just that's how life was uh, tossing us back and forth at the time. But rest assured that on most every other Thursday, we will be airing um, 8 to 9. We'll keep that going consistently. There shouldn't be any other breaks in the show, including even in June with the birth of my second uh, child. I will be continuing this show even while Nights of the Nephilim is on break um, and then we'll pick back up with that in July and then like I said if you know and as Daniel has said if you have ideas of what topics and discussions I know some of you have dropped us that in the past we haven't forgotten you in fact I have a list of the things that you guys have asked for in the past that we will be picking up on this season if you have guests that you would like to see us have on the show, let us know. We actually recently got reached out to by a company that works with and manages a flat earth theorist um, where he has been on several famous television shows and networks talking about his theories and proof that the earth is flat. So we will be trying to get him scheduled for the show um, and get him on. We have several other guests, mediums, psychics, and different things that we want to be bringing on the show and interview them. Um, they're always a lot of fun bringing a third on. We will be trying to maybe even open up this season to allow guest phone calls from you guys out there to call in and ask questions of our guests, of Daniel and myself. Let us know things that maybe you want to bring up during the show. But keep in mind, if you are listening out there, you can listen from any platform you'd like. But if you do it through Spreaker from the app or from the .com page, which is S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, so speaker with an R in it, um, that is our hosting company. That allows you not only to listen to the show, but does give you an instant message feature where you can type to us, drop us comments, and ask questions. That's where Logan and Chris have dropped in comments tonight, um, and you can do so as well. We do read them off. We make sure that every one of your comments get read, um, and you never get left out. So, you know, be a part of the show. Join us. Let us know what you want to see. Drop us an email. Like our group page. Interact with it. We have so much more coming for you this year. Like I said, if last year you thought was great, this year is going to be tenfold. So a lot of great things coming. And uh, Dan, other than that, anything else you got going on, brother? Oh, well, I'm always busy, baby. You know what I'm saying? I keep I keep, keep the energy flowing. But listen, uh, one thought that just came to mind while you were talking is um, – 
I personally speaking, uh, I don't I don't let the world get me down. And I would like to maybe do something in terms of so once this documentary comes out, it's it's a collaboration between friends, um, and it's part of a series I call I, I, I produce through my company called A Passion of Mine. It's a documentary series, but for celestial oddities, I would like to do some sort of visual medium. I would like to do some sort of video thing. Now I don't know exactly how that looks. We don't have a plan yet, but uh, we're going to talk about it and and figure something out. I know that you know before the COVID thing happened and a lot uh, events were were canceled. Uh, Garrett and I were actually going to be you know getting a table at a paranormal event and um, you know uh, meeting people and and marketing and advertising their lives. So I would love to sort of do lo- something live like that. And then we were also going to go do a little video at uh, the Mothman Festival in uh, summer. It was going to be June 2020, I believe, was the year that we were supposed to do that. And then, of course, the event was canceled as well. But, um, you know, things are changing. Things are getting a little bit better. I think every month uh, more events are are reopening and and more venues are reopening. And I think we'll be able to do something. So uh, we'll always have the content and the show going for you guys. But I think, Garrett, at some point we should put out, you know, some sort of video medium for people, even if it's uh, something short that we do or maybe some sort of live event that we can shoot and edit. But we'll get some visuals out there for you guys, you know, after this documentary comes. We'll have something, something to, you know give you guys something a little bit more dynamic and in, in, in alignment to the show as well. I, th- I agree with you 100%. I think that uh, as things start to reopen, we can do more of that. I thought about booking some of, those th- some of those things again this year, but it was very uncertain at the time that they were asking for registration to be filled out. Right. Didn't want to throw down money again and then have to turn around and try to fight people to get it back. It was a hassle last year. Um, So I think if it doesn't happen this year, folks, it will be happening next year with things like Mothman Festival, some of the Paracons that happen like Moundsville Paracon at the Moundsville Prison, um, Hillview Con um, at Hillview Manor in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Some very awesome high energy paranormal locations that have conventions where we can set up a booth, meet the public face to face. Hopefully it'll be without masks. Hopefully we can, you know, mingle with one another, see one another, talk to one another about all things metaphysical, paranormal, alienistic, um, cryptid. It doesn't matter. We want to get out out there and be a part of the public mingle with you guys and girls out there um, do some visuals of a commercial for ourselves for celestial oddities and maybe some other great ideas that daniel and i will be uh, talking about to get you guys consistent and constant you know content for you um you know like i said this show has such potential and it's going to continue to grow um you know we just now are dipping our toes in but we've yet to swim absolutely Love it, man. Sounds great. I'm so happy to be back. You know, um, thank you everybody for tuning in. And I'm and if you're just getting to the show late, I'm going to recap on a little tangent we went off on earlier. Uh, we do have a we do we are analyzing a video of a possible werewolf sighting. Okay, and if you want to watch the video and decide for yourself, you can go to our public Facebook group, which is Celestial Oddities Pair of Normal Guys podcast page. That is a pub- public Facebook group where I posted a video of a possible werewolf sighting in somebody's backyard. So go over there, check it out. Let us know what you think. Share your thoughts, your feelings, your concerns, and uh, that's 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 what I got. We're back. We're back, baby. Well, you heard it, folks. You can catch us in two weeks, and that would be um, that would be on the 29th. Um, you can catch us with, and I don't have the topic picked out yet. Me and Dan are still discussing because we have several to pick from, but it will be a topic that you guys have asked for. So stay tuned, and we will be releasing coming up soon some lists of guests that we will be having on this season of the show, as well as other upcoming topics to let them kind of simmer and marinate a little bit. So that way you guys kind of got a pre-glance into some of the things to expect this year's you know episodes and we will still be adding a lot more in 24 episodes last year we plan on doing the same this year so we'll be covering a lot of ground um yes logan we can't wait for you to see the documentary as well it's going to be pretty dope and uh definitely check the video out chris thank you guys for tuning in tonight and other than that uh that's it for me as well. I just want to thank all you guys for tuning in tonight. And Daniel, once again, thank you so much. Happy to be here, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Garrett, look forward to doing it again, man. We'll see you guys in two weeks. See you in two weeks, guys. Signing out.